Mm-hmm. You know, you have to define what that means for you. You have to design, you have to define what success means like for you. What does impact mean for you? What does passion mean for you? What does purpose mean for you? And passion is selfish and purpose is selfless. And so we got to have both, right? We got to have passions that we got to have fun in this life and do cool stuff, but we also have purpose. But yeah, I, I ask everyone that works with us, the men and women, um, you don't have to be successful. You just got to want to be successful. Yeah. Uh, I lay on the sky, you gotta glow, you gotta glow, you gotta glow, she had my attention, she gotta know, she gotta know. I'd like to welcome everyone to another episode of the Let's Gather podcast. I'm your host Zeke, and in this episode I have Tommy B. Love to speak about how to be legendary and leadership. You can find more information about him by clicking the link in the description below. I to give a content warning for your channel and use this episode, and hope you have a day, and enjoy the show. So, uh, I want to thank you for joining the podcast. Uh, thank you, Ezekiel. I'm humbled and honored to be here, brother. Let's lean in and get to the work. Yes. So... If you want to uh, adjust yourself to the audience, you can. All right. I'm Tommy Breedlove. I'm the legendary. I'm the author, the Wall Street Journal and USA Today bestselling author of the book Legendary and founder of the Legendary Life Movement, uh, a movement that's built around ambitious executives and entrepreneurs who want to not only be successful in business and life, but who also want to be successful in all phases of their relationships, their friendships, their money, their business. And so uh, we're not for everybody, but we're for the few who want to be the exception. So let's lean in, man. Yes. Took that from Darren Hardy, by the way, who's <laughs> my mentor. <laughs> okay. So in your words, what does it mean to be legendary? So the reason I put, I'll tell you what it means to me. Um, let's start by telling your audience why I pick the word legendary as the title to the book. Um, what I love about that word is it's given to us. Ezekiel, if you and I say that we're legendary, people would laugh us out of the room. Um, people give it to you. So your community, um, your friends, your colleagues, the people you serve, they either dictate whether or not you're legendary or not. And I, I think it's an aspirational thing to shoot for. And you can either be a ridiculously bad legend or you can be a ridiculously good legend who makes significance, purpose and impact. And for me, <clears throat> what building a legendary life means is, number one, taking action, always taking action. Number two, building a world-class network. Number three, building your financial fortress and your financial mindset. The next thing is reconquering your time. You're in control of your time. Time is not in control of you. You are in control of your time. You reconquer your time. It also means freedom. It means surrounding yourself with people who lift you up and make you better. It means mastering your mindset and your emotions, being proactive and not reactive. It means cutting out the noise of society, the 24-hour news, the social media nonsense, and you being the lion and not the sheep, you being the puppeteer and not the puppet of your life. But it also means building intimate relationships with your family, friends, your significant other, true intimate relationships, true authentic connections. It also means living the good life, man, going out there and having some fun, enjoying it. Uh, really experience in life. And finally, it means living a purposeful life, a life full of purpose to where you leave our fellow human beings and the world around us a little bit better than you found it. And so that's what the book legendary, that's what the whole legendary life movement is built around is those principles. And we truly, and I think the reason it became a wall street journal on USA today bestseller is because it's fun. It's quick. It's simple, but most importantly, it's actionable. Like it's it's tactical skill sets on how to do these things. And really it's a it's a book on self-leadership and self-mastery. And I think it also people really like to listen to books too. So I also read it to people on Audible. So <laughs> there you go. There you go, Ezekiel. Definitely. And these are all core values that are very important. Yes. I want to break them down. So like I know for me, like in college, like trying to find a network or like making genuine connections was something hard because you know, like you go to events, you know why you're there, but you don't want to come off as like, I'm just here to meet you because you're important. You could get me somewhere. Yep. Yep. It's really hard. I I think your generation also, it's having authentic connection because you're so distracted and it's not your fault, any of y'all's fault. I mean, there's, I mean, we basically live in a casino where everybody's got their head buried into addictive technology. Um, You know, 
social media is extremely addictive. Cell phones are extremely addictive. It's easier to text than to actually look someone in the eyes and have a conversation. But I think the way you form authentic connection is going with an, as a net giver, asking somebody, how can you help them? How can you serve them? Um, being authentic, telling them you don't have all the answers, just being you, right? Not putting on some sort of mask to impress them, um, not taking from them either. Just coming in with authentic questions, uh, authentic questions, just being you. Um, talk about what lights them up, what they're excited about. And if what lights them up and what they're excited about is the same thing that lights you up and gets you excited, you could have a friend for life. And your friends will become the most important network that you have. They'll become your biggest champions and supporters. And I always ask my, I have three rules for friendships. Do they make me happy? Or do they make me better? And if they make me happy and they make me better, they also have to be a net giver and not a net taker. Definitely. You don't want to just be giving, giving to somebody and you're not, not even, not that you need something, but it's got to be that, quid pro quo. You got to be receiving as much as you're giving. Otherwise yeah. they become an energy vampire. <laughs> yeah. And then I was going to mention how everybody can do legendary, but legendary is different from each person. Yeah. You have to define what that means for you. You have to design, you have to define what success means like for you. What does impact mean for you? What does passion mean for you? What does purpose mean for you? And passion is selfish and purpose is selfless. And so we got to have both, right? We got to have passions. We got to have fun in this life and do cool stuff. But we also have purpose. But yeah, I, I ask everyone that works with us, the men and women, um, you don't have to be successful. You just got to want to be successful. And so we ask the men and women in our community, the women and men in our masterminds, the men and women who come to our experiences on our retreats is what the success means like for you. What if you had if you died today, would your heart be filled with gratitude and would you have any regrets? And if they, if you have regrets right now, well, let's go out and seize the day. Let's go out and, and figure out how we can not have regrets and how we can live the life that we always were meant to live. And so, yeah, that's, it's super important to define what legendary and what success means to you. Mm -hmm. And it made me think about the movie Troy when it clearly said he doesn't want to die in history. He wants his name to live on. Yes. Yes. And the truth is most of us won't. Yes. <laughs> that's okay. Um, you know, my definition is, did I make an impact today? Did I show up today fully? Did I take action today? And did I net give today? Did I make this world a better place than I arrived today? Um, only today, not tomorrow, just today, because we're not granted tomorrow. Um, and if I can say yes, then I have truly built and lived legendary today. You know, how did I win today and how can I win tomorrow and how can I be better tomorrow than I was today? But people, man, I'm telling you success, it, it, there is nobody owes you anything. And it, the difference between the people who are massively successful in business or in sport or in music, it, they all have one thing in common and one thing on it. They're not smarter than you. They're not better than you. They just work harder than you do. And they're relentless about the day-to-day -day building their craft and doing it better than they did yesterday. They go to the gym early. They go to the office early. They work harder than everybody else. And they just get shit done. That's what makes them successful is grit. It's not luck or talent. It's grit. Where grit and talent and, and meet each other, that's where luck happens, man. And so that's a good one. I have to remember that. <laughs> It's like in the, um, they said Kobe Bryant, he woke up four o'clock in the morning and then influenced everybody else to wake up four o'clock in the morning for the team. He was a, he was a net giver and a culture builder and he was a leader. Yeah. And guess what he also didn't do? Tolerate inadequacy. He didn't tolerate the other guys coming at six or seven. He wanted to set the example, set the bar. And how many championships did he win because of it? Right. Yeah. And then uh, or the saying always says, hard work beats talent. When talent does it, hard, try hard, work hard. Yeah. I love it. I love it, brother. So, when somebody comes to you for like the training and things, what is like the process behind that? Well, <clears throat> it's it's different for different levels. To join our community, there's one interview that happens, and it's by my co-facilitator, Jonathan Bates, who was a uh, 
former special ops naval guy, and he wants to see he 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 is there to discern you whether we like you. Um, and it's our lowest level investment, and the community meets twice a month. And again, it's about self mastery, being better in business, being better with money, be better in mindset, be a better human, um, more self confidence, and just sharpening the pencil, right? And so our community, it's pretty easy to get in that. All you have to do is be a net giver. You have to want to be successful and you've got to want to invest in yourself. And so that's our lowest level investment. Now, if you want to level up and come to a retreat um, at the beautiful Mountaintop Lodge in North Georgia, where people come and spend four days to learn how to be elite, to gain clarity in who they are, where they're going, who's coming with them, to gain all the skills and tactics that it takes to master your mindset, and to connect with other world-class people, there's a big interview process. I interview you, Jonathan interviews you, a team member interviews you, and we also, um, and we also, there's big questionnaires and things that people have to fill out because we don't want to let anybody in. We want people who truly want to be successful and who are true, want to be great leaders. And once you get in and you go through the four-day immersion, then whether we like you or not, we choose whether or not we let you in the mastermind. So you can't join our mastermind without going through the retreat. It's our qualifier. And so once from there, we want we want to be the friends and family you choose. We want to be the friends and family that you choose to do business in life with. So the dip your toe option is the community. The go all in and be world-class and badass option is to come to a retreat, which is hard to get into. It's not easy to get into them. But you'll be a better person for having to go through the interview process, right? And once we select you, after you go through the retreat, we either will or will not invite you into a mastermind. And we also do these crazy experiences all the way around the planet where we do fun, we do sport, we do outdoor, we do cool stuff. A lot of uh, a lot of our members, like we have members that stay with us for years and years that are in our Legendary Life Mastermind or they're in our Legendary Life community. We do open up our legendary experiences where we go have fun and do adventure or do something outdoors or a sporting event or whatever, we do invite that up to their friends and family. Um, so, you know, there's, there's multiple ways to get involved with us. The key is, are you an action taker? Do you want to be elite? Do you want to be better? And do you want to be successful? And the answer is yes. Then join us, man. We're, we're happy to have you. Um, just be on the lookout. We don't do victims. We don't do apathy. apathy. We're allergic to, we're allergic to laziness. <laughs> And we're allergic to entitlement. If you fit any of those, we're not the place for you. But if you fit into where you want to be successful and you want to be better, then come join us. Definitely. And in creating like this whole uh, legendary and the, the process, the interview process and the different levels, what was like the, how did you work through it, work through it to make it into this process? Well, we worked hard is the first thing we did. Um, you know, we, we walk the walk. Um, so I'm in the mastermind coaching retreat and experience business. Guess what I belong to two masterminds. Guess who I employ two coaches to help make me better personally and professionally. And so we've kissed a lot of frogs over the years. I don't want to kiss any more frogs. And so each time we kiss a frog or we fail, we learn from that. We learn what we don't want. We learn how to teach people how to treat us. We learn to say no. We learn to say boundaries. But what's more important is that we protect the men and women who we serve. We can't let a-holes in. We can't let um, bad people in. And once in a while, one will slip through and we'll own it immediately. But they will not stay with us long. And so it's through learnings. It's through failures. It's through great coaching. I, I will have a coach till my last breath. I will be in a mastermind until my last breath. It is by far the best investment I've ever made in myself. When I started hiring coaches and getting around like-minded men and women, my success, my relationship, my happiness, the best investment you can make is you. And that's the pillar to our legendary life movement is you must prioritize yourself first, i.e. self-mastery, self-leadership, self-discipline, master of your mindsets, master your emotions, mental, spiritual, emotional, physical superiority. Um, and so we practice what we preach. We have great coaches and we also learn from our failings. That's how that interview process, the questionnaire, um, all of that great stuff has come to being. You know, we want, we want the good thing about us is we can choose 
who we want to do business in life with. I mean, and that's really the only power any of us have is our power of our choices, right? And so that's how we do it, Ezekiel, and that's how we learn. Yes. Definitely learn from mistakes and then build on top of it and then make new mistakes and then make fix Hell yeah. Mistakes, I mean, scars are better. You know, they're, they're tattoos with better stories. <laughs> so every time we have a scar or a mistake or a mess up, we own it. You have personal accountability, extreme ownership. B, we learn from it. C, if we need to apologize, we apologize for it. And D, we move on and we get better every single day. So I love that. Yeah. Thank you for asking that, Ezekiel. Welcome. And then you keep mentioning like your coaches and how I heard that you need like a board of directors for your life, the people you go to. What is that relationship like? So for me, it starts the number one person on your board of directors. I call it your inner circle. Number one, the most important is your significant other. And if you don't have one who you choose to do life with, and I want you to hear me, I want everyone under 30 to hear me. Do not get married until you're 30 years old. Do not, because you won't have any idea what you're doing. I know you think you're an adult. You don't. And the data is there. You're statistically a hell of a lot more likely to go through the pain of divorce and wait till you're 30. Wait, 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 wait. And so um, I'm telling you, it's the best advice I could ever give you. I did not follow that advice. A lot of people I know didn't follow that advice. If you wait till you're 30, you'll have a clear direction on who you are, where you're going, who's coming with you, and you'll have a clear direction on who you need to bring with you. Your most important asset or your most important liability is your spouse. They either lift you up or tear you down. And by the way, if they're crazy before you marry them, they're going to be ridiculously crazy afterwards. So just kind of anything, any issue you see is 10x bigger when you get married. Trust me, someone who's been married for 25 plus years. So with that being said, the number one person on your board of directors is your spouse. Um, the board of directors are people you choose to lift you up, to make you better, and to hold you accountable. The definition of a good inner circle member or a friend is someone who will tell you you're being an asshole when you're being an asshole. That is the best definition of a great friend in an inner circle. Someone who tells you you're being arrogant and not humble. Someone who tells you you're making decisions out of ego and not decisions out of love. Those are the best people. And those and and it's okay to fire friends and it's okay to fire board members. They served you and you serve them during this phase of your life. And it's okay if they go do something else. Um, you know, our our desires change, our purposes change, our needs change, what we want in life changes, and it's okay that our friends change. But it's not cliche. I mean, they've been saying this for thousands of years, and all these great motivational speakers have have taken it as theirs. None of it's theirs, none of it's mine. But we are the five people we surround ourselves with. And again, they don't have to be successful. They just got to want to be. Um, and, you know, they got to choose happiness. and They got to choose love over fear, a joy over rage. Um, they need to be critical, uh, critical second and curious first. But if you hang around with judging people who think they're victims, who are angry, who thinks the world owes them something, guess what you're going to be? You're going to be those things. But if you choose to choose love and you choose light, you choose growth and you choose curiosity and you choose joy and you choose to invest and work on yourself, you will attract others like that into your life. And so I'll get off my soapbox now, Ezekiel. Awesome. Yeah. So I was um, had a thought for that, but I'm going to switch it to what is humbleness? Because sometimes I feel like people tell you to be humble when you're confident and they just they, it attacks their insecurity. Yep. So arrogance is insecurity on steroids. Arrogance is loud. Arrogance is me, me, me. And when I'm not talking about me, I want to talk about me some more. Arrogance is draining. It's overwhelming. So that's not, that's not confidence. Confidence is quiet. So there's a difference between confident and self-esteem. Confidence is working your craft and being the best at what you do and constantly sharpening the pencil every day to be better than you were yesterday. That builds confidence. It's the dribbling. It's the shooting the basket. It's the passing. And it's the learning. Every single day, the, the crap we don't like do so that when we get into the arena, we're great at it. And honestly, you can become confident in anything. Even if you suck today, you can be confident in anything. All you got to do is the reps. And that's what makes the elite elite. That's different than self-esteem. 
Self-esteem is looking in the mirror and loving what you see. Self-esteem is looking in the mirror and seeing an ally, not an enemy. And we're not taught that. We're actually taught shame. We're actually taught that we're not good enough. We're not pretty enough. We're not smart enough. We're not thin enough. We're not rich enough. We're not whatever enough. And so self-confidence is rewiring our heart muscle and mind muscle. We must do the reps. We must get stronger internally. We must lead ourselves first. We must invest in ourselves first. We must love ourselves first and respect ourselves first so that when we look in the mirror, we don't take ourselves too seriously. We do see a loving, beautiful person. We see that we're worthy enough, valuable. We see that we are the problem and the solution. And we don't want to be arrogant. We don't want to lead with ego. We want to lead with love. So we want to be humble and humble is quietness. Humble is shoulders, head up, shoulders back, chest out and calm and quiet and proactive and not reactive. So that's the difference. Makes sense. And then go back to the board of directors. There's always that question of loyalty versus honesty. And a lot of people pick loyalty because they want, they don't want to lose people, but you kind of need honesty because you need to know what's the truth is going on. Correct. Honesty is kind. Um, honesty is now don't be a, no, if you're just being mean to be mean, yeah. that's not honesty. You know, there's some things better off not said, right? Your job is not to hurt people. And by the way, hurt people, hurt people, but clear is kind. Um, and if you are honest with somebody about how you feel, or you see that our relationship isn't one to be, and they leave, that's on them, man. That's their insecurities and need to be something that they're not. And so that's their blind spot. That's their ignorance, not yours. And this whole thing that we believe in is ignorance to awareness to transformation, ignorance to awareness to transformation, to eventual mastery, and then leadership. And leadership is teaching, by the way. So if you're honest with someone and you're not being an ass, let me just be clear. Like If you're honest and not being mean and they leave, that's on them, man. And you're better off for it. So. I'll leave it at that. Yes. And to go into leadership, when did you feel like you became a leader? What was that moment like? You know, that's a great question. Um, I feel I've always been a leader. I feel like all of us are leaders. Every single human being on earth. Some want to lead and some don't. Most don't. Um, But I felt like I was a bad leader for 36 years because I was insecure. I was afraid. I was worried. I let people who didn't matter matter, and I cared what people thought. It was when I looked in the mirror and decided to work on me, my heart muscle, my mind muscle, my soul muscle, my physical muscle. When I started looking in the mirror and and wanted to be better, wanted to be happier, wanted to be joyful, wanted to be a giver, wanted to be more open-minded, that's when I became a good leader a quiet leader, a lead from the front, a lead by example, not lead by my words, but lead by my actions. So I think I've been a leader my whole life. I think everybody's a leader of their friends, of their family, and their relationships, men and women. We all have it in us. It's just do we want to lead from the front, lead by example. And lead later leadership is about courage. And 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 just being who you are and lead when the fire comes, are you going to run to it or away from it? So that's what leader and I've been a bad leader and a good leader. And I constantly, I think great leadership is also extreme ownership is owning it, being authentic and sharing wisdom and not advice. And so I've been both. Got it. I also feel like I've been thrown into the leadership fire. A lot of times before I feel like I was a leader and I feel like I'm 21 when things went wrong and I stood my ground. I feel like I became a leader at that moment. Heck yeah. Heck yeah. Every time that you fall down and get back up, that's being a leader. And it starts with leading yourself. The number one failure in leadership is self-awareness. Knowing yourself, knowing thyself, strength, weaknesses, masks, and blind spots. Where are you, where are you showing up fake? What are your blind spots? Being open to criticism, to be open to owning it, and be open to work better. That's just true leadership, man. Definitely. And, and when you're helping people in their journey for lead, to master leadership, do you see like different types of leaders or like how they're developing? 
Oh yeah. It's all, I mean, leadership and happiness and joy, they're all journeys, not destinations. Um, the worst thing that we can do is drink our own Kool-Aid and think we got it all figured out that our way is the right way that we become certain. Um, and it's harder the older we get and the more successful we are to not drink our own Kool-Aid to constantly be, because when we're not growing, we're dying. When we're not learning, we're, we're stagnating. And so for me, wherever you are in the leadership realm, if you're looking in the mirror right now and saying, well, I'm not a leader, well, you could be. Um, and look in that mirror and know that's the problem and the solution. And what one small action are you going to take today to be to lead yourself better so that you can lead others? And the greatest leaders in the world lead themselves first. They invest in themselves. They grow in themselves. They got great coaches. They got great peers. They surround themselves with people who lift them up and make them better. So that's what great leaders do. You think, I mean, Kobe couldn't do it alone. You know what I'm saying? A great CEO can't do it alone. Um, we can't, and that's another founding principle, but one of our founding principles is we must prioritize ourselves first. The other founding principle is on you can't build a legendary life or business alone. Isolation is the enemy of excellence, and we are who we surround ourselves with. And that's why we say we want to be the the, the family that people choose to do uh, life and business with. Nice. 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 Yeah, because you can't, it's like if you're not if you don't know yourself, you don't have a good foundation. It becomes a blind leading the blind. And Correct. And pain leading pain. Yeah. And if you don't think we're emotionally, mentally, and spiritual weak, turn on Facebook, Twitter, or the news, man. I mean, come on. We are so much better than that crap they're reporting and that stuff that's on there. We are all of us, all of us collectively, like 99.9999% of all human beings are good, loving human beings. And and if you don't think we're spiritually, mentally, and emotionally weak, look at that noise on Twitter and Facebook and look at those talking heads screaming at you left and right on the 24 hour news. It's, it's just ridiculous and painful. Turn all that off. Look in the mirror, invest in yourself, put goodness. Let me read legendary to you. Listen to this great let's gather podcast, call a friend, get out in nature, read a book, you know, meditate, go into gratitude, learn a new skill. That's goodness, man. That's leadership. Not with the talking heads and Facebook and Twitter are screaming at you every day. So there's a little bit of wisdom for you. <laughs> nice. Sucks. Okay. We talked about the book. We talked about leadership. To be treat. What else? You want me to close this out? Uh, yeah, you can close it out. Yeah, let me tell you. Um, let me tell you some great wisdom I got one day. I was getting ready to do a really dangerous river. I was going to raft a river, and it was extremely dangerous. I, I think it's considered the top five most dangerous river in the world has something called class five rapids and um that's river speak for super dangerous um and i asked the guide i'm like well what do i do if i fall in in one of those class five rapids the first thing he said was follow the light i didn't like that advice which means i'm dying so i didn't like that advice i was like okay if i don't want to follow the light and i'm ready to live a little bit longer what do i do and he goes well you must participate in your own rescue you must participate in your own rescue. And what he meant is turn over, head up, feet out, look for the rope. And if the rope's not there, swim to your own safety. That's the best advice. I've, that's the best life advice I could ever give. And it came from a river rafting guide. I'm going to be a little mean, but it's true. No one owes you anything. No one's coming to save you. And there is no magic pill or quick fix. I'm going to say those again. No one owes you anything. No one's coming to save you. There is no magic pill and there is no quick fix. You must participate in your own rescue. You must, the only power we have in life is choices. That's it. You must choose to do something different today than you did yesterday. You must choose light over darkness. You must choose growth over dying. You must choose learning over certainty. You must be cu cho choose being curious over critical. You must choose to lead with love and not fear. And you must choose to take intentional action. If you do those things, 
you will build and live a legendary life. And you will leave this earth with a heart full of gratitude and no regrets. And I'll close it out with that, my brother. Nice. I always say, you, I can't save you if you, you don't want to save yourself. That's right. That's right. And, you know, when we're on a plane, they say, put the mask on yourself first. What a great analogy for life. Cool. Uh, thank you again for joining. Uh, where can everybody find you and find information? Yeah, man. So um, if you want more information, email me directly at Tommy at TommyBreedLove.com. It's Tommy at TommyBreedLove.com. The book Legendary. Uh, the Wall Street Journal and USA Today best-selling book, Legendary. It's in electronic, it's hardback, it's softback, and it's on Audible. If you're not a reader, I will read it to you. <laughs> so there's no excuse. Um, but if you're interested, uh, follow us all. The, I know I've been beating up social media, but follow us at Tommy Breedlove. Follow us at the Legendary Life Movement. We're always putting out time hacks and leadership hacks and business hacks in mastery and mindset and relationship stuff. We're putting out light. We're putting out the goodness. We don't, when there's no, there's no politics or original religion on our posts. And so we're all about, you know, being the best leaders and humans we can be. Check us out. Uh, the book legendary. I will read it to you. It's on audible. It's at all your favorite bookstores. It's at your airports. Um, if you're really interested in joining our community or want to get involved with a retreat or mastermind, email me directly, Tommy at Tommy and follow us on social at the Legendary Life Movement or Tommy Breedlove. So that's how they, people can get in touch with me, man. Nice. Again, thank you for joining the podcast. Hope everybody has a good night. And see ya. That brings another episode of the Let's Get Our Podcast Club. Again, you can find more about Tommy Breedlove by clicking the link in the description below. For next week, I have my friend Joel to speak about being a designer. Hope you're doing that day, and I hope to see you there.